Hey, Chase, um, just wanted to ask what you saw on that on that sack that you got on Sunday. Walk me through that play. So we were running a stunt and uh, just based off, you know, his footwork, I knew he was kind of had a feeling for what he was going to do in terms of like just like blocking down. Uh, you know, it's one of those things you practice. Coach Kiff, you know, helps work on my uh, technique and stuff and uh, just made a play and then saw the running back, saw the quarterback, said, there's no way I'm letting this guy block me. Uh, and, uh, you know, I got to him and when I did, I knew the, the cavalry were coming. So I had to get him down quick if I wanted the full sack. Um, and yeah, I did, thankfully. And uh, yeah, it was a great moment. It was a long time coming. Uh, for me, it was a little bit of a, uh, it was just, I've been through a lot, you know, these past two years, try to get back, get get that sack again. Finally, they got it. And, uh, you know, we were talking, uh, you know, building up to it, you know, what the sack celebration was going to be. I had a lot of people ask me. So uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the old school telephones where you spin the dial, you spin the dial back, you spin the dial again. And uh, made a phone call to uh, to whoever created the universe. Call him God if you want. And uh, just gave him thanks, you know, just to be healthy, be able to play the game I love and uh, to be out there with my teammates. So, yeah, I was I was going to ask, I mean, I know it's been a tough year for you with the injuries, just getting that. Does it feel like a weight like off your shoulders and, and finally make a play like that that you've been waiting for? Yeah, it feels really good. I just I've been telling myself, I just like I just need one. I just need one. That's what I've been saying. I just got to get one here. Um, and uh, like I'm sure most of you guys maybe and relate to in terms of like writing it's like sometimes the first couple sentences are the hardest it's like uh once you get to the point where you can get one it's like you you've learned enough about the the game you've watched enough tape you 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 know it's like um and i've got lots of sacks in my career but but uh, this game evolves it gets it's different it's like every team is different every um every scheme that you're on is different every week is different and uh I enjoy the challenge. So yeah, it felt great getting the sack. It felt great being back out there and uh, getting a dub. So just just keep it rolling, healthy. So, amen. Thank you, Ashley. Let's go to Tom Withers. Thanks, Rob. Hey, Chase. Happy New Year. Shout out to Rotary Phones. Hey, um, what is happy it? You too. You guys always have something to play for, but what's it going to mean to be able to go to Pittsburgh? in the season finale and potentially wreck their playoff plans? First off, I'm from Pittsburgh, you know, the suburbs. <laughs> Thomas, shout out to Thomas Jefferson. So this is a really cool game for me. I never made it to the district championship, which is played at Heinz Field. Um, and so this is my first time actually playing at the field. So this is really exciting for a couple different reasons. But on the Browns notes, uh, you know, as a, as a Browns player, um, I don't want to say I'm con contractually obligated, but uh, I definitely feel some sort of obligation, uh, you know, as a, as a Browns player to uh, to try to win this game with everything that's on the line. And uh, I, I really look forward to that opportunity. And I asked Kevin before, you know, credit to the commanders for putting together a 21 yard or 21 play 96 yard drive. How how Difficult can that be, Chase, to not be able to challenging to get, to not be able to get off the field when they're converting one third down after the next, and it just kind of seems to snowball on you. Yeah, I could definitely. You know, it's obviously you know it's a long drive, historically long. I think they said uh, it's the longest or tied for the longest since like 1993, um, which is is pretty crazy stat. However, I thought the defense played really well. We created turnovers. You know, it's like obviously it wasn't perfect, but. Uh, they had a lot. They had a lot to play for. I mean, their playoff hopes, and so it's like there's just a different vibe when you know. In my experience, playing against teams and players that that have something to play for, typically, you know, it's whether it's a playoff atmosphere or a big game versus when games are you know might not mean as much. So, uh, I thought we went out there and we battled hard despite the fact that you know we don't we don't have the playoffs to to contend for and uh, to just you know keep coming and keep going. Um, it was pretty awesome. So yeah, they, they had they had one drive. It was, you know, shout out to them for just keeping it going, just um dinking Duncan down the field, you know, a couple yards here, a couple yards there. Um, but it was what it was. So whole game. Thank you, Tom. Oh, thank you, Tom. Dan Lobby, go ahead. 
Hey, Chase, uh, you mentioned wanting to be the guy that got there before anybody else on, on that sack yesterday. How competitive is that room with you guys trying to get home and, and trying to be the guy that gets there? Yeah, it's definitely pretty competitive. You know, Miles is, uh, I think we always have some some friendly competition. We we play this game where you go like left or, or uh, right or up or down and you have to try to uh, guess which way the other person's going to go. So it's just like, um, we're, we just find ways to compete on and off the field and um, we love brushing the passer. And, and when you got a guy like Miles and Jadavian and, um, you know, guys inside like uh, Taven and Perry on and Alex, Wright, It just, you know, there's a whole room of guys that, that are, are very talented and, uh, and definitely have the will. So it's like, you know, when I, you can kind of feed off that energy, but also know that, you know, you can do, you can do it just as well. Um, and, and try to do it better. You know, it's like, it, it pushes everyone to, uh, to just, you know, keep working, do everything they can. And, uh, and it's fun, but yeah, like I said, the cavalry was coming. I knew, I knew once I, I grabbed them, there's going to be uh there's going to be the boys trying to pounce on them, take that half. So I, I had to, had to get them in the, the alligator, you know, drag them down real quick. So. Uh, we saw miles. Uh, I know on one of his sacks, he lined up, he, he was standing up over the center um, with, with his ability to kind of line up everywhere. What, what is it? Uh, what does that do for him? And what does that do for the rest of you guys too? Yeah, I'd say I'm kind of in the same boat where it's like when you could put a player in different positions and, and just kind of mix and match it. Uh, I'd say in terms of schematics, it, you know, it's, it's no surprise that you know our defense uh, uses, you know, two rare, like tries to use two very disruptive defensive ends. And uh, so teams obviously have a response just like anything else in football. And so what you guys I'm sure have noticed if you watch the, you know, football, it's like they've, they've lined up in all sorts of uh, different formations, try to get chips and tight ends and running backs and um, just trying to get chips. So when you can move guys inside and alternate their positions, uh, it makes it harder for that to happen. And it makes it harder for them to predict their play calls in terms of how to like best chip because a running back chipping is different than a tight end chip. Um, and there's little nuances like that. So yeah, just like having the versatility to be lined up in several positions makes it hard for offenses to uh, to really scheme up, scheme people up. So scheme us up. Thank you, Dan. We'll go to Dale Ryder. Hey, Chase. So uh, back when rotary phones were a thing, uh, so were Brown Steelers. Uh, they used to play a lot of really meaningful games. Now it's now obviously it's it's Steelers and and Ravens. So as a, a Pittsburgh kid, um, and you're not contractually obligated to say you did not hate the Browns as a kid growing up, but like, w w did the Browns matter to you, uh, you know, growing up in, in, in Pittsburgh or was it the Ravens that you guys just kind of really got up for? Yeah, the Browns definitely mattered, but honestly, I, I was always, uh, always a rebel. Like I respected players. Some of them, you know, Troy Paul Muller, one of my favorite football players, like of any team, um, I, I definitely, you know, had a bunch of Steelers jerseys, et cetera, as everyone else did in Pittsburgh, really. Uh, however, I was actually a Marshall Falk fan. I was a huge, uh, huge Rams fan and uh, went to the game uh, as a kid wearing a Marshall Falk jersey one time when they were playing the Steelers. So I think it's kind of apropos that I ended up as a Patriot and as a Brown. Um, you know, who knows how the, the rest of my career plays out. However, uh, yeah. So, I mean, th this is obviously a big game. I mean, Brown Steelers, like they got a great fan base here and, and Pittsburgh has a, has a great fan base there. So it's like when you clash, like, you know, two very willing teams against each other with uh, so much on the line, there's obviously, uh, there's obviously going to be some fireworks. So it could be fun. Early in the season, the, the defense really had its ups and downs and just over the, I guess, Again, similar to last year, the second half of this season, it seems like things have fallen into place on that side of the ball. I mean, you look to that 21 play drive, you answered a lot of questions about, and then you guys come right out in the second half and force a three and out and give the, the offense a chance to really take control of that game in the second half. Just from your perspective, what has changed uh, on your side of the ball in recent weeks and where you guys seem to be having more success, creating turnovers, making some big plays when the game is on the line and things like that, which were areas where you guys struggled early in the year? Yeah, I'd say there's not like some magical answer that like we didn't do anything drastically different. However, I think one of the biggest things was just not giving away, you know, free and 
um, you know, free plays, just like, you know, these huge plays that, you know, maybe guys were, were wide open or, um, you know, not, not pointing fingers, just saying like, you know, there's, there's certain instances where, um, you know, just problems that, you know, whether it's communication, whether, you know, th there's a, a several things that you can, like I said, you could point to. Um, I think just limiting those is the, the biggest thing, because I think, uh, you know, as a defense, I think our unit uh, has played well in, in a lot of situations and, and it only takes one play for them to score a touchdown. It's just the, the reality of the defense or the reality of the, the, the nature of playing defense. So it just comes down to every man doing their job and executing the assignment the uh, the coaches you know put out for us and uh, communicating the the shifts and you know everything that goes on with that. So um, everybody's been doing their job and uh, the results have, have shown. So just got to keep it rolling. Thank you, Daryl. Scott Patrick, you're up. Hey, Chase. When you talk about the difficulties of the last couple of years for you, what would you say the hardest part's been? Mm, for me, I think that sometimes lessons like I said I, I try to keep it on topic here but I think like existentially it's like you know we're all here it's like why are we here nobody knows so it's like at the end of the day it's like maybe we're here to learn certain lessons and sometimes you know we learn those lessons through things that mean the most to us and for me football means the most to me so it makes sense that you know when you you take that away or uh, you know, you, you mess with that in a certain way. It forces me to reflect on my experiences in my life. And I like to think that I've learned, you know, a lot of lessons through this time period, one of which, uh, you know, not drawing my validation as a human and as a being from my performance on the football field, which as you can see with lots of ex examples, look at Brock Purdy. I mean, you know, he was, uh, Mr. Irrelevant, right. And he didn't even, wasn't even expected to play. And, all of a sudden now he's the guy and everybody loves him. And, you know, next week, if he, you know, goes out there and there's a couple of interceptions or something, all of a sudden he'll, they'll be rooting for the next guy. So it's like, uh, yeah, just, just drawing from a, a different source, uh, I'd say is, is, uh, is one of those things that uh, was, was a hard lesson for me to learn, you know, when it's like you, you want to be validated through your performance and uh, you know, through your peers and, and knowing that sometimes that, it, it doesn't matter how hard you try or how hard you do or even how well you do. It's like it's uh, there's a subjective subjectivity to the whole experience. And um, ultimately, you need to internalize that process. You know, what were the runners up to the phone call? Did you have other celebration ideas? Yeah, we were. Miles and I were talking about doing, uh, I don't know, maybe like a precision airstrike or uh, something, you know, uh, Call of Duty related, just, you know, from our time playing video games back in the day. Uh, maybe calling in a, uh, I don't know, just, we were just messing around with different ideas. We were talking about doing a lightsaber battle. Uh, we we had some some fun things to play with, but ultimately I, I figured the first one had to go up to the uh, the big man. Thanks, Scott. Let's take two more. Mary Kay Cabot, Tony Grossi. Mary Kay. Uh, yeah, Chase, just wondering, um, did you watch the Kenny Pickett drive you know, live last night, or have you seen uh, his amazing uh, game-winning drive last night? If so, you know, what did you think of it? And, um, you know, when you look forward to playing him on Sunday, what challenges do you think he's going to present you guys? Well, he's, first and foremost, he's, you could tell he's smart. I mean, going back to when his time in college, you know, you could, just the fact that he was, uh, he was aware. And, and I mean, I, I think of it as a form of intelligence, just playing the game as, as the game is being played. It's like, you know, the way he he was running, faked the slid and then just ran into the end zone. It's just like so obvious that like just to take advantage of like the way defenders play. It's like he obviously understands the game and uh, and looks at it in a way that uh, I'd say, you know, other people don't. And I think that's one of the tell, telltale signs of, of uh, you know, obviously a smart player, but um, you know, when you combine that with other attributes that he does, like his mobility, uh, it's, it presents a lot of problems for defenses. And uh, with how much they have riding on this game, I know that, uh, you know, he'll be bringing his best effort and as will the rest of the guys over there. And uh, I just, you know, I'm just trying to do my job and, and help us out the best I can. So. And did you watch that live last night? Were you home in time to, to see that or have you seen it yet? Yeah, I haven't seen it. Yet. I haven't seen it yet. So I've seen some uh, highlights from the game but I haven't, I haven't watched the uh, last drive of that game, no. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Mary Kay. I'll take one more, Tony Grossi. Uh, 
Okay, so two things. First, just to clarify, you said you were a Marshall Falk fan, but did you not dream of playing for the Steelers as a kid? Mm, honestly, I, I didn't really have like the idea of like me making the NFL. I, I just like playing football. I didn't. It wasn't like uh, you know, hey, I want to I want to play for the Steelers or something like that. So I was maybe in like middle school when I was just like, hey, why not? You know, <laughs> like why 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 not do this? And I was just like, I want to play in the NFL. And once I set my mind okay. to it, it was kind of uh, one of those things. But um, I don't know if it was necessarily for the Steelers. It just just was what it was. I've I've always kind of been a rebel. I've always beat to my own drum. Just is what it is. So <laughs> I guess that apropos, I'm here. And I did a quick check of your career. I think your very first NFL game was against the Steelers, and that's the only time you played them. But that was in New England. And have you ever played in that field in uh, high school championships or in college? Never played there. That, like I said, it's pretty cool that the last game of this year is going to be uh, at Heinz Field, and with so much riding on it, and I'm going to have a lot of my family there and my my friends, and a lot of lot of supporters and you know people that want me to do well, but you know maybe not our team, but you know we're a package deal. <laughs>